Hey, what's up everyone? Greg here, and I have more MacBooks than I would ever like to admit, and with all of the hoopla about the MacBook Pro i9 being thermal throttled, a lot of people in my videos are asking if the same thing would happen to the 2018 i7 model. Both are 6 core models, so a lot of people are speculating that maybe the 2018 i7 model is also thermal throttled. So I wanted to do a test to see if the 2018 i7 is actually being thermal throttled because a lot of you are making purchasing decisions. So here are the parameters for this test. I set up a 2018 MacBook Pro with a 2.6 gigahertz six core i7 processor and I compared it to the 2016 MacBook Pro 2.6 GHz quad-core i7. I chose these two because they have the same clock speed, but the 2018 is a 6-core and the 2016 is a quad-core. Therefore, we can see if the extra two cores actually make export times any faster, and also if those extra two cores are making the chassis of the MacBook Pro any hotter. I also set up the 2018 13-inch MacBook Pro. This is the baseline configuration with a quad-core i5 processor with its base clock speed set at 2.3 gigahertz. All of these MacBook Pros will be rendering the same 12 minute and 30 second 4K file with unoptimized media and zero rendering done to the project. It will be processed into an H.264 video file. I also have the Intel power management window open so we can see how hot the CPU gets and what speed the processor is running at. So with all that said, let's get started. As we let the process run for about two minutes, we see some expected and some not expected results. We can see that the 2016 MacBook Pro initially boosted above its clock speed, but went down to its base clock speed pretty quickly. The 2018 MacBook Pro has been pretty steady around its base frequency, with some slightly lower alterations, but it's beating the 2016 and 13-inch 2018 MacBook Pro. The 2018 MacBook Pro is turbo boosting way beyond its 2.3 GHz base speed, and has a higher clock speed than the 2016 MacBook Pro but it is still in last place. Temperature for the 2016 MacBook Pro is at the lowest at 79 degrees Celsius, the 2018 15-inch at 86 degrees Celsius, and the 13-inch 2018 at a very hot 90 degrees Celsius. So 90 degrees Celsius is the thermal throttling limit on Intel CPUs, so we can expect to see some throttling on the 2018 13-inch MacBook Pro. So as we jump ahead, the 2018 15-inch MacBook Pro remains in first place with 50% of the exporting done at 3 minutes and 28 seconds. The 2016 15-inch is at 47% and the 2018 13-inch is at 44%. Interestingly enough, we can see the intense thermal throttling on the 13-inch suffering a pretty major dip here. The 2016 continues to be the coolest running system and is still running below the base clock speed with small jolts above 2.6 GHz. The 2018 15-inch with 6-core i7 seems to maintain a pretty consistent clock speed during exporting, but at rates below the 2.6 base clock speed. At around 5 minutes, the 2018 15-inch is 75% done with the export. The 2016 is behind it at 70%, and the 2018 13-inch is behind that at 66%. Again, the 2016 and 2018 are both performing below their base clock speeds of 2.6 GHz, and yet they aren't close to the 90 degrees Celsius thermal limit, where normally intense CPU throttling would happen. They're both around the 76 to 79 degrees Celsius mark. The i5 in the 2018 is actually running the hottest of all three of these machines, which is interesting considering the 2018 is not running a dedicated graphics card, which would add heat to this test. The 2018 also did suffer a thermal throttle, while the 2016 and 2018 15-inch seem to be just using lower clock speeds for this exporting task. The 2018 15-inch is the first to finish exporting the video at 6 minutes and 25 seconds with the processor running at some of its coldest points towards the end of the exporting at 76 degrees Celsius, again, below the 90 degree thermal throttling limit on Intel CPUs. The 2016 has been running above its clock speed at times, but also dipping below in big spikes. It has the lowest temperature of all three of the laptops now hovering at 73 degrees Celsius. However, it's about 13% behind on export time. The 13-inch remains the hottest, hovering above the 80 degrees Celsius, the clock speed now closer to the 2.3 GHz base speed. So finally, the 2016 finishes the export at 6 minutes and 59 seconds, and the 2018 finishes last at 7 minutes and 18 seconds. So, is the 2018 i7 thermal throttled? I'm not so sure? 
While the 2018 i7 never really went above the 2.6 gigahertz process for any extended period of time during the export, it never really reached the 90 degrees Celsius throttling limit on Intel chips. It also exported faster than both the 2018 13 inch and 2016 15 inch, which honestly shouldn't be a surprise. This is a six core processor, so it should perform better than both of these laptops. I've also observed during other tests the i7 processor turbo boosting past 4 GHz. And while we're at it, while I was recording this audio for this portion of the video, the processor maintained a 3 GHz speed. So why is the processor not turbo boosting during Final Cut Pro exporting? I can only speculate that some apps like Final Cut and Premiere are not utilizing the full power of these new Intel chips. We may need further software updates and optimization to take full advantage of these cores, because during other tasks, I am getting full advantage of these cores. Also, the 13-inch quad-core MacBook Pro seem to turbo boost the most for export and suffer from thermal throttling. But again, the export time seems better than the older dual-core model, so is this really too much of an issue? Let me reiterate, I'm not a chip expert, I'm not a throttling expert, maybe something in my methodology is wrong, maybe my test is unscientific, but all I can say for certain is that the i7 model of the 2018 MacBook Pro remains the fastest Mac laptop I have ever used. Still gathering a lot of information for my full review, but I hope this export test was able to shed some light on this incredibly confusing situation. Thank you so much for watching this video. If you liked it, please show your appreciation by hitting that like button. If you want to see more from my channel, make sure you subscribe. And also, let me know if there's anything that you noticed that I did wrong in my test or why my conclusions might be invalid. I really do want to learn as much about this issue as I possibly can. And if you have any other questions, leave them in the comments below and I will see you in the next video.